Hi, I'm Marlo from Wild Food UK, out foraging again. It's the 26th of June and it's a beautiful day, but it's been raining for the last few weeks almost entirely, which has meant that loads of mushrooms have come up. And this one down here is one that I've been waiting to do a video of for a while. I think that what we have here is a uh, a mushroom called the, the lurid bolete, or the Suillellus luridis, formerly Boletus luridis. Um, can't be 100% sure until I've done a little test, but I'm going to show you some interesting things about this mushroom. So, first of all, we'll just get him up. And I'm trying to, trying to do this without touching him, because anywhere you touch this particular mushroom, he bruises. And I'm going to show you that to great effect in just a second. But here we go. We've got a clay coloured cap, which, if this is the Luridis, is very variable. It can be darker or lighter. And we've got this orange pore system that you can see under the cap. There's no gills. Those pores make it a member of the wider Boletus family. Um, from a forager's point of view, that's a, that's a good thing, normally. Um, you can see on the stem there, we've got some sort of vinaceous colouring down at the base, but yellowing, and most importantly, this mesh, the reticulation that you can see on there. Well, that's what that netting effect that you can see is called, reticulation. Now, that means that I've certainly not got a Scarlatina Belit. I did a video on the Scarlatina Belit earlier on in the year. That one's got dots on the stem, which makes it quite a safe mushroom to identify. This one has reticulation and that reticulation on a mushroom with these characteristics is shared by uh, a couple of the, the toxic Boletus that we have in this country. They're, they're very rare. We've got the Satan's Belit which is uh, named the Satan's Belit because it's red but also because it's very toxic. I'm not sure that it's classed as deadly but it would certainly make you very very ill. We've also got the uh, Boletus legalii, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, and it's toxic as well. Now they both have red colouring on the pores, or, the, or particularly on the stem with those mushrooms, but they also have this netting effect, and all mushrooms can be quite variable, depending on where they're growing and what conditions they're growing in. So this stem could be redder on this particular mushroom, and you might well find a Boletus satanus or Rubro Boletus satanus uh, with a paler stem, just because of the conditions it's grown in or what's happened to it. This one, if it's the uh, lurid Bolete though, there's an effect that you only get to see when you cut it in half. Um, all of those mushrooms stain blue when damaged or when the flesh is damaged, um, particularly the flesh of the cap. And uh, this one, I'll show you now, I'm going to cut them all the way in half and show you what happens. So you can see him going more blue as he oxidizes as the mushroom's flesh comes into contact with air. And you can see there's a slightly different color down at the base of the stem, where this mushroom can often stain a, a tiny touch red. Now the effect that tells me that this is the uh, lurid belete and not the satanus is the fact that, um, I suppose it's easier to show you here, but you've got a red line where the pores meet the cap and it's probably most red there. Now again mushrooms are quite variable and this one's dried out a bit today so that line isn't particularly prominent at the moment but what you can do just to try and expose it a little bit more is peel off a bit of the sponge and the flesh at the edge where the uh, sponge, the pores, are meeting the flesh of the mushroom, you can see it's gone slightly orangey red around there. Now, that's what tells me that this is the lurid belete and uh, makes it an edible mushroom, but it is certainly not 
a mushroom for any novice forager. Um, that line and that colouring can be very faint and it's not that obvious even on here. Um, and there are just simply uh, some toxic look-alikes that, that are very, very similar. Both of the ones that I mentioned are extremely rare. So you would have to, it would be unlucky if you were to uh, pick a Satan's Belit in the UK. Um, but the rule that I always teach novice foragers is quite simple. If uh, there's red anywhere on the mushroom, you've got the stem and the pores under the cap. And if it stains blue, as you saw, which is fading, as you can see, then just leave it behind, unless you really know what you're doing. There's no point in poisoning yourself for a mushroom, no matter how tasty you think it might be. Um, so yeah, simple rule with the Belitas family. No red, no blue. And that way you'll leave behind all of the highly toxic Belites in the UK. Makes this a good family for novice foragers to, to go for. If you follow those rules, no red, no blue, you'll certainly leave behind some edibles, but you'll also leave behind all the poisonous ones and you'll be perfectly safe. Um, this one, the Loridis, defined once again by the reticulation and the reddening, the dark line which appears between the sponge or the pores and the cap. Lovely little find, one that you can uh, eat for yourself, but if you are going to, please be 101% sure of your ID. Don't take any chances, not with any mushrooms that look like this. If you want to find out more, go to www.wildfooduk.com.